Hi everyone, I'm Bruno Aziza and welcome to another episode of Data Journeys. This is where we come to learn from data leaders, their success, their growth, their best practices and their worst practices as well. So today we are talking to Jake. He's the head of data engineering at Coffee Labs. Jake, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. Thank you, Bruno. All right, Coffee Labs is an interesting name. Not many people might not know what the company does. Tell us, what does Coffee Labs do? Yeah, so Coffee is a new insurance company focused on commercial trucking. And we're different in a couple of ways from legacy insurance companies. The first is, not sure if you know, but the average time from application submission to quote is about 10 to 12 weeks in commercial truck insurance. Why? Things like fax machines, really old till they delimited databases, data from all over the place. Our service standard at Coffee is to get that process done same day. So when you submit an application to us, we turn around a quote in the same day. How do we do that? We ingest hundreds and hundreds of millions of rows every month of historic crash inspection, fleet operation, marketplace data. And we also ingest live telematics data. And so bringing that data all together into a single application allows us to generate quotes much, much, much faster. The second major difference between coffee and its legacy competitors is how we underwrite. And most legacy competitors will underwrite a fleet. They'll look at how a fleet has performed in terms of safety, what kind of operations they're hauling, maybe where they're located. They'll look at drivers for violation information, but they really treat all vehicles the same. They might look at the age of a vehicle, they might look at the weight or maybe the, the replacement value, but they don't actually look at physical or mechanical characteristics of the truck. At Coffee, we look at about 100 different physical, mechanical, and safety characteristics of a truck to underwrite the risk at a vehicle level. The thinking being that as new safety technologies are adopted, these trucks will become more and more safe and newer trucks will start to differentiate themselves versus older trucks with these safety technologies. So you're delivering quotes faster. You are understanding these trucks better because you're taking into account the latest information. How big is this business? I mean, how many trucks are you dealing with and how much business are we talking about here? Yeah, so coffee's a, a new program. We've uh, we've only been writing premium for about a quarter, but we've written $1.3 million in business um, in our first quarter. We look at about 10 million trucks on the road and provide real-time risk scoring for those trucks. And we ingest, as I mentioned, about 40 uh, years of historic crash inspection, fleet operations data, marketplace data when trucks are bought and sold, et cetera. Excellent. So data really is at the center of your business and your operations and the types of services you're providing. Let's talk about the use cases. How are you using this data? How is it providing better services and enabling you to drive a better business? The first big way we've, we've brought this data together is in our underwriting dashboard. So our underwriting dashboard is the core system that our underwriters and business team look at to evaluate and price risk. And so we bring in all of the information we know about fleets, drivers, vehicle operations, other fleets that might be related and put it into a single interface that our, our underwriters can move through quickly um, to make decisions on, on these quotes. Second big area where we use this data is for lead gen and marketing. So let's say we wanted an analysis of all of the trucking companies that haul furniture that have insurance companies or insurance policies in Illinois that are expiring next month. Data is in place and systems are in place to do that very quickly. And the third is uh, ongoing coaching. So it's not just determining whether or not a truck is safe, but is that truck now engaged in unsafe activity? And is there any action we can take through coaching or, or other actions to make that driver and make that truck, truck operate more safely? Well, so you have the ability to assess risk, you have the ability to drive your business better, and you have the ability in real time to provide coaching to reduce risk. So really using data in the full a circle now. Now you've been in this space for a long time. This is not your first data and analytics project. So let's talk about the best and the worst practices. If you were talking to yourself at the beginning of this journey, what would be maybe the one or two things that you would tell yourself you must absolutely do these because they are leading to better success. Yeah, so a couple of things. One, at Coffee, we've done a really good job at developing a, a self-serve culture around data and analytics. We want to encourage our, our teammates to be curious about the data we have. So data dictionaries in our internal wiki, SQL templates that they can just drop into the BigQuery console, data studio training on how to quickly visualize data from sources. Um, that I think that's my, that's my big first point is, 
build that culture of, of self-service and curiosity around data. Second big recommendation I have is use, as engineers, use low code and no code tools to bring engineering and, and business together. It's very easy for us to look at a data prep flow and explain to a business user exactly how the transformation works and what the output will be. You can't do that with a Python script. Very, very difficult with a business user. Also, we're in a regulated industry. Same principle applies when explaining this stuff to regulators. Another helpful tip is benchmark data quality. I think a lot of data engineers and analysts treat transformation and cleansing as a one-off activity. It isn't. And if you can't measure data quality, you're not going to be able to manage it. So what percentage of your attributes are you using? Can you use more of your attributes? Are you taking activities or making transformations or are going to get exogenous data that will increase the percentage of these attributes that you're able to use um, from your data sets? I really like this one because this is something we don't think about often is what is the percentage usability of the data that you're working with? It's a, it's a big way to assess if your self-service strategy is indeed working. All right, well, let's talk about the flip side of that. What are some of the things that might make sense at first, but people really should avoid doing? Big tip I have, don't reach for code first. So the converse of the low, no code tip is that Code is not something that's human readable. It's not something that's easy for non-technical users to digest. And it can be hard to maintain. I mean, let's face it, right? As engineers, we've all seen terrible uh, data transformation and cleansing code. So don't reach for, for code first. Uh, second tip I have, don't automate everything at once. So as engineers, we tend to want to do everything 100% right off the bat. Doesn't work that well for startups, doesn't work that well um, for new data sets. So what we do at Coffee is we take the big red button approach. We, we try and automate 50, 60%. 70% where it makes sense, but we keep those automations running under the supervision of a human and at the request of a human until we're sure. That is great advice. Now let's talk about maybe one question I didn't prepare you for. What is your favorite trifecta data prep feature? Yeah, BigQuery predicate pushdown. It's a relatively new feature. Uh, it comes from uh, from the land of Parquet, and um, it makes those transformation ten to a hundred times faster when pulling data out of BigQuery. So definitely a, a huge improvement and uh, a very helpful feature. Well, that's something I didn't prepare you for, but you answered it very quickly, Jake. This was excellent. Thank you so much for spending the time with us today. Thank you, Bruno. All right, and if you want to hear more stories of customers just like that, be sure to click on the link down below. Until next time, I'm Bruno Ziza.